To, they're trying to uh, do I hair to be more calmer and to calm me down. So my hair isn't coming down and uh, my mood is just going up and up and up. But yes, it's beautiful. Yes. Your song Beauty Never Lies was originally written in the sermon. Yes. Do you prefer to sing in English or in your mother tongue? What's different? Uh, to be honest, the message of the song is very similar in Serbian and in English. This year we decided, the whole delegation and the people who were on the Eurovision Song Contest before, uh, to do something new, mm -hmm. because I, in my country, I'm a soul singer. But for me personally, Serbian version has a special meaning because that's the first song that was written for me by Vladimir Grajic, who also is responsible for me being here because he invited me. And um, Leontina wrote the lyrics. They were really thinking about me and consulting me about everything. So the, the Serbian version, Teo Svetimoj, is my personal, my small personal favorite and deep in my heart because that's my first song ever that is made for me that I recorded in Serbian. So I love Serbian version, but we'll be trying something new this year. And if you really prefer, I could sing the chorus of the, the Serbian version. That's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Chorus now or at the end? No, no. no. Yes. Uh, do you know how to sing along with me? Yeah. Okay. Cijel svet je moj, gledaj me, letim slobodna. Ceo svet je moj, nebo je granica. Nek sam drugačija, a u tvojim je očima istina. To sam ja. Your unique style. Well, thank you. On stage? <laughs> yes. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about your costume? Well, this costume for Eurovision and my overall styling uh, on every event, this was this is unfortunately mine because it's I like to be relaxed in what I wear and I don't like anything <coughs> that pulls me and bothers I'm a, I'm a I'm a lady. <laughs> <laughs> but my styling for the Eurovision happenings and of course my beautiful beautiful dress uh, was made by Igor Todorovic who is our fashionista in Serbia high fashion and he is so amazing we have a really really good relationship and a really really lovely sense of humor our jokes are I think nobody understands them but we are laughing are off <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, okay we will start with the questions from the audience. Oh, is it okay? Of course. Um, please, you know it from yesterday. Raise your hand, stand up, uh, and uh, tell us uh, your name, please, and who you represent. Okay, we will start with the man, yes, here in the middle, in front. We have assistance with microphone. Please speak in the microphone so that the online viewer can hear you better. Hi, I'm John from ESC Insights. Welcome. Um, Thank you. You mentioned that before that you were initially a soul singer. I've seen your performances on The Voice of Serbia. You gave some amazing performances to Shaka Khan songs. And so this is quite a different style for you. Was it easy for you to kind of transform into this disco diva that you are for this song? Is that what you've always wanted to do? Well, lately, uh, in the past year and a half, 
I'm in that disco mood. So it was not an easy thing for me if I were to do it alone, but I had a great help from, from the composer of the song. We talked a lot, we changed a lot of things. Uh, he really uh, made it to fit me. So it wasn't easy, maybe, it, it was harder for the audience to accept me like that, but for me it was something new and I like, I always like doing something new. So this is, the whole experience is beautiful for me. Okay. Hope that answers your question. Yes. Next question besides from Australia. Yes. Hi, uh, Boyana Alistair Birch from SBS Radio in Australia. I have a question about your involvement in the Bosco Buha Theatre. Oh, yeah. Can you tell us a little about that? And children in the audience, are they more difficult to please or easier than adults? Oh, that is a beautiful question. Thank you for asking me that. My friend from my high school, my music high school, um, now of course we're older, he composed the mu music for the show, for the, the show called uh, Tom, Tom Sawyer. We did Tom Sawyer and that is the only musical uh, in Serbia in children's theater. So it is a beautiful uh, show to watch and to hear. Um, I really enjoyed doing that. I, I'm, I'm not doing it right now because of this, but I hope to get back on that stage. Because children are the most beautiful audience ever. They're so honest. Every reaction that they, they are, like, I can explain a scene in, in a show where, where um, uh, Tom's aunt is saying, Oh, Tom, go to bed. Come on, hurry up, hurry up, go to bed. And he's like, Oh, Auntie, could you please say something beautiful like, Oh, my little soul, my little love, could you please go to bed? All right, my little soul, my little love, yes, go to bed. And the little girl is sitting in front of her room, and she's hating the auntie. And there's a scene, of course, where they are looking for Tom and uh, Ben in the forest. And then the auntie's uh, left alone on the stage, and she's like, oh God, please, take care of my little boy, he's my little soul. And that little girl, same like this, yeah, now you tell him. So, <laughs> so those are the reactions that are really beautiful. And we like doing that. So. Thank you. Hi, boy, you with Oh, I know you. Oh, wow. Oh, I know you, babe. <laughs> I'm William Lee Adams from Ruby Vlogs. On yeah. stage you have white flags and they normally symbolize surrender, but you're obviously in it to win it. What does it represent? Well, uh, what? They won't be white. Oh, so here is our director. <laughs> so he's uh, telling me that they won't be white. <laughs> So, uh, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> but I can tell you that uh, the flags are going to fly and they're going to be very cheerful and I'm going to try to avoid them while singing. <laughs> I don't know now what to tell you, but um, the flags are going to be white. I don't know which color they're going to be. Okay, they'll tell me later. There's a lot of things that I am uh, learning as I go, <laughs> so I'm sorry if I am not able to answer your question. Maybe in a day or two, I will. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I really wanted to answer to you especially. Oh, la la. Next question. Okay, please. Oh, my hair. I'm Simon oh, from Poland, Radio News Meta. Uh, welcome back, Serbia. We missed you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. By the way, you, you look with in, in your dress like emperor, you know, not like a like emperor. Wow, uh, thank really. you. Oh, the question is about the composition as such. You are not the composer of the song, but what was the, the sense? Because uh, actually, in the second part, it changed completely. And uh, some people like the first part, and the other part love more the second part of the song. But what was the meaning of this big change in the song? Well, uh, maybe that's a question for the composer, but this is my answer. We wanted to do something that is a bit different than I usually sing. Because I'm a soul singer, people often expect me to be like, ah! you know. You know, that the, the gospel Aretha, solely funky. 
But I wanted to, we wanted to do something that is more peaceful in the first part, that I can show people that I can really be maybe shy or mysterious, you know, that I have that quiet little voice sometimes. And then it sort of progresses itself in something that is that wow part. So I think that's a good combination. I really like it. You have part that you, uh, I think we satisfied all kinds of audience with the song because if you like the first part, we even have now the chill out version. So uh, we have a lot of versions actually. <laughs> and if you don't like anything about, I don't know, the original version, you can hear some other. We have even the yodel version. I'm not going to. Oh, hear. I know. <laughs> I know. I like this. Yeah, but I don't think I'm a good yodeler. Oh. Oh, the only yodeling I, I learned in my life is from the sound of music. <laughs> when the choir was an only yodel, 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 yodel. Yeah. But uh, we really, we really made an effort to to satisfy everybody, everyone's taste. So that's all I have to say from my angle about the song. <coughs> On the official press conference, you can really uh, take the composer like this, like this, like this, and ask him everything. Sorry, <laughs> guy. <laughs> Just a second. Okay, you can ask a question about. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, um, you can also um, ask questions via hashtag Ask Eurovision. Thank you for the questions. Uh, there is one from uh, Dimitri. Ooh, Dimitri would like to know you represent Serbia on its returning year. How do you feel about it? To be honest, I am very proud and thankful that Serbia eventually elected me because there were three of us on the national election and I'm thankful to to the composer of the song who invited me to sing it. Of course, uh, Vladimir Grajic and I really made a good relationship during that uh, journey and we talked a lot, we met each other, he really knows some personal things about me which is very important for the song itself and of course after all the things that we've been through until now, I now can say that I'm very, still maybe unaware that I am the one, because I used to sing, I used to see my colleagues on the Eurovision stage, and now it's me, but um, I'm very proud, and the sense of responsibility is now bigger and bigger, of course, after this first rehearsal, it's even bigger. So I'm very happy, uh, and I think I will never forget this as long as I live, honestly. Okay, next question uh, from Frida. What means for you the word beauty, and what's your message with your song? Love from Mexico. Oh, I love Mexico. Mexico <laughs> sent me a lot of love lately. Well, uh, uh, to dear Frida, uh, the word beauty. It's just, just what you see and say, oh, what a beautiful flower. Mm -hmm. You have beautiful flowers, but they're poison, they're poisonous, you know. Uh, you just need, the word beauty for me is something that you need to get to know a little bit, to just maybe create a relationship, a sort of a relationship with that beautiful thing that you really consider beautiful, <coughs> because sometimes you may discover it's not as beautiful as you think and something else that you haven't considered beautiful has possesses the real soul beauty and uh, the, that not skin deep, you know? So the word beauty for me, uh, it's a very important word because uh, now people are telling me you are beautiful. They always told me you are beautiful, you are beautiful, you are beautiful. But I was always a big girl and uh, if you're, I think that's the, 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 the sub-question of that question for Frida. Um, I always considered myself beautiful and I'm thankful for my family for that. But when I came into the public scene in Serbia, people reacted to this or that. Uh, but uh, it turned out that beauty is actually at the end when you take the, the equality sign. It's um, 
It's not a skin deep. They really met me. I'm honest in what I do. I love what I do. And beauty is a, a very important word for me. It's not a skin deep thing. Okay. Now it's time for photos. Okay.